Here's a tutorial video on heating curves and how they work and how they show the states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. This is a sample of the first graph that you made in part one of our heating curve graph. You might remember that we put water in a test tube and we placed the test tube inside a beaker of salty ice water. The average Ke or temperature decreased and the water froze and then the, continue, the temperature continued to drop after all of the water was frozen. We took the test tube out of the icy, salty water, put it in the room, and then the energy from the room passed into the ice, and the temperature of the ice increased until we reached the melting point. And then the energy that used to be going in to make the particles move faster was then used to overcome the forces of attraction between the ice particles and the substance was eventually all liquid. In part two of our lab, we took a beaker of that liquid and heated it on a hot plate up to the boiling point. And if our thermometers were perfect, this would flatline right around 100 degrees, but nothing's perfect. So you see once again that the average kinetic energy or temperature does not change during a phase change. And the energy that's being added over time, down here at the bottom, is being used to overcome the cohesion forces between the water particles and break them free into the gas state of matter. So what I've done is I've taken little segments of each of those two graphs. This segment here comes from this zone of the first graph when we're heating the ice. And this segment here obviously comes from this part of the boiling water graph. So if we were to somehow connect these, if we were able to do an experiment where we could continuously heat ice and make it melt into water and then heat the water and make it boil away and then somehow trap all the gas that came bubbling out of the water and then keep heating that, we might get this. And this is what's known as a heating curve. And you'll see that it is clearly a heating curve for H2O because H2O melts at zero degrees and it boils at 100 degrees. If we had a different material like gold or something like that, then the shape would be the same. You'd have these little flat parts these plateaus, but the numbers where those changes occur would be different. So the most important thing to notice about this heating curve is that this is average kinetic energy, and this is heat is added over time. So you did this as part of your homework recently and you see that heat energy is being added over time, and here's average kinetic energy, but you might note that these numbers are a little bit strange. So whatever this substance is that's being heated and melted and heated and then boiled away, it is an H2O, and actually it's chocolate. So if we look closely at A, this is when the chocolate is in the solid state of matter. You heat it up to 34 Celsius and it begins to melt. It doesn't get any hotter, but it does turn to liquid. And after that very last solid chocolate particle melts, then the heat energy that's going in is used to make the particles move faster again. And you have liquid chocolate and now it reaches the boiling point. Temperature stops rising and the heat going in is used to break the cohesion forces, the forces of attraction between the liquid chocolate, and they all break free and become gas. Uh, I would venture a guess that it's probably not safe to breathe in gas chocolate. So your homework asked some specific questions about this. It said, where is the substance only solid? That would be here at A. Where is it only liquid? It's only a liquid in this zone at C. Where is it only a gas? It's only a gas up here at E. Where is the melting point? The melting point is here at B. 
Where's the boiling point? D. Where's the freezing point? Well, if we started with gas and cooled it down, it would condense into liquid, and then you'd have liquid, and it would cool down, cool down, cool down as you removed heat, and then right here it would freeze. So this is the freezing point, B. Where is the condensation point? Up here at D. And the condensation point is the same temperature as the boiling point. It just depends on whether you're adding heat or taking it away. Where could the substance be in both the liquid and the gas phase at the same time? Right here at D, you could have liquid chocolate boiling into gas. So you would have liquid and gas at the same temperature and at the same time. Where could the substance be in both a solid and the liquid phase? Here at B, where could evaporation occur? Evaporation occurs in a liquid at temperatures below the boiling point. So at C, you could have some evaporation. Where is vaporization occurring? There are two ways that matter can vaporize. It can evaporate, so it could happen here at C. And another form of vaporization is boiling, so you could have vaporization here at D. Where does condensation occur? It would occur here at D. Where does temperature increase? Here at A, C, and E. Where does temperature remain constant? at those moments when the phase change occurs, B and D. Where is heat energy added? Everywhere, constantly. Heat energy going in in this part makes the particles move faster. Now it overcomes the forces of attraction. Now it's used to make the particles move faster. Now it's used to overcome the forces of attraction. And now it's used to make the particles move faster. Where is heat energy used to overcome the forces of attraction between particles, here and here. Where is heat energy used to make particles move faster? Here, here, here. And where do the particles have Ke? Everywhere. And let's continue here. Here's this interesting substance called lauric acid. It melts at 43 Celsius and boils at 299 Celsius. So if you were to heat up lauric acid to a temperature of 150 Celsius, you would not reach the boiling point, but it would melt. So the way that you would draw in a heating curve, you would need to add in a little title here. Make sure you say that it's for lauric acid. Here's temperature in Celsius. Here's heat energy added. Here is solid lauric acid being heated. Then it melts, and now that it's all melted, the temperature continues to rise for the liquid lauric acid. Here's sugar. Sugar melts at 160. So here's your melting point. It should align with 160. And a tasty latte, which is a coffee-like beverage, if you don't know, uh, tastes best at 71 degrees Celsius. So here's 71 degrees Celsius. And I think I called this the melting point. Uh, this would actually be, this would be the melting point of sugar. So whoever put this sugar into my latte and wanted to melt it, um, that would cause some serious burns and probably a lawsuit. So I think they probably meant dissolved. Hope this was helpful.